Hello Legacy Sabres, Marsh here. So today we're going to talk about the coolest part about programming input so we can make two-way computer programs now um, using the keyboard reader. So Java input is not straightforward and it's kind of different depending on what Java environment you are using. The reason it's not straightforward is that Java is a completely object-oriented language whereas every method must be an object and must have to use an object. So in other words, there is not a simple built-in command like input for basic or for Python. Those of you that use Python also uses input. So how are we going to get input in Java programming? Well, we first must import terminalio.keyboardreader at the top of our program. Now, what does that mean? The import statement incorporates a file from your computer into your program. The keyboard reader class, which is imported, gives us the functionality to get input from the keyboard. Without this statement, you will not be able to input inf information. Now, we are basically going to be taking someone else's program that they have written for us to be able to get information from the keyboard. It's going to make it much easier for us as the user or and as the programmer to use keyboard reader. Second thing is you have to create an, and instantiate a keyboard reader object. Now that sounds like a lot, but ultimately here's the line of code that we need to memorize for that. Keyboard reader space reader equals new keyboard reader. So this statement creates a new keyboard reader object, kind of like how a string was an object. We're creating a new keyboard reader. New variable, if you want to call it that. The name reader is just an arbitrary name. You could be calling it anything you want. So if you want to make your keyboard reader Bob, that's cool. I like to name it reader because it makes a little bit more sense in my brain. So then I know that the reader has to read things. So it always will read keyboard reader. Notice capital K, capital R, reader equals new keyboard reader. Okay. Then we're going to create a prompt that will display on the screen for the user. Usually this is going to be in a print statement, not a print line. So it's going to be system.outprint, quotations, here's a prompt to ask. This statement creates a prompt. Now a prompt is just a statement that tells the user at the console window that something is to be entered. You're prompting them to ask them. The reason why there can be consistently going to be a print statement, not a print line, is because you want it so that whatever the user starts typing in information, it's going to be on the same line as the prompt that you put on there. So that's the reason why we're going to have that print statement instead of a print line. Then we're going to get the value from the user types in using the methods of the keyboard reader. So it's going to be something like this. I make a variable double variable equals reader, the name of my keyboard reader, dot read double, because that's what I want to read in. I'm wanting to read a double. So we're going to get the value that's entered from the keyboard into the variable. The reader object is going to wait for the number to be inputted and the enter key to be pressed. Once the enter key is clicked on, it's going to place that value into the variable. Now, we don't want to just only be able to read doubles. We want to be able to read more than that. So here's the methods in the class of keyboard reader. We can read chars in, we can read ints in, we can read lines in. This is if you want to read in a string. And we can also pause so that the user has to enter, enter, press enter to make it happen. So either char, double, int, or read line. Those are the common ones that we're normally going to be using using our keyboard reader. You can also add a prompt in that input statement. It's going to save you a line of code. So there's the two options are doing the same thing. So I got system.outprint, please enter a number, and I got variable equals reader.readInt. I could also put that prompt inside of the parentheses of my reader. So reader.readInt, and then I got my prompt inside. Makes it a lot easier. You don't have to forget about that prompt. It makes it easier to be in one line. So that you can place the prompt inside the parentheses of your read, read in statement, or you can put the prompt on its own, on its own system out print. Let's do an example together on Replit. I also need to show you guys how to put keyboard reader terminal IO into our keyboard. So let's jump on to Replit.
So let's go ahead and make our replet. So I logged into replet, clicked new REPL, and I'm going to name my REPL input example so I can look at it later. I'm going to click create REPL. Oh, I already have one name. Dag nabbit. Let's go input Java. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to fix the code that they put here. So I'm going to delete that. Public class main lines public static void main string bracket bracket args. Okay, just like we've done before, just like we've done. Okay, always got to have that to start our programs. All right, so. I need to be able to import my keyboard reader for my input. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a folder and I'm going to name this folder Terminal I-O. Notice capital T, capital I, capital O. The second thing I need to do is I need to add some files to that. So I'm going to click this triple dot. I'm going to click upload file and I have to go find my Terminal I-O stuff. This I placed inside of Classroom for you guys to be able to use. So Computer Science A, I got my Terminal I.O. I need both of the dot class, so Keyboard Reader and Screen Writer. I'm going to open them both, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop them inside of Terminal I.O. So I'm going to pull both of those dot class files inside of Terminal I.O. That's going to assist me in being able to access those two information for my input. Now that we have done that, let's import our keyboard reader. So up here, first line, I'm going to put import and then I'm going to capitalize Terminal I.O. dot keyboard reader semicolon. Okay. So what that's doing is it's pulling in this information that I just put into my files. Okay. So second thing I need to do is I need to create a keyboard reader. So I'm going to do my commenting here. Create a keyboard reader. Okay. Makes it easier for me to remember why did I make it. So keyboard reader. Now I gotta put a name for him. I like to call him reader. Maybe you wanna call him Bob, doesn't matter. New keyboard reader. And then I need to put parentheses behind that. Why is that? Well, to make a keyboard reader, I don't need to provide anything. So that's what the parentheses are stating. The parentheses are stating you don't need anything to make a keyboard reader, okay? Made one now. So let's get some input from the user. So um, get the name of the user. Okay. So let's get the information, the name of them, of the user that we're going to talk to. So I'm going to make a string variable, <coughs> name it name, equals. And I'm going to say reader dot read line. And inside the parentheses there, I'm going to put the prompt that I want to ask them, which is enter in your name. Okay. So what that's doing is it's literally prompting the user for their name. Second thing I'm going to do is now I'm going to print out system.out.println and I'm going to print out Hello, with a space, and then their name. So that's me basically saying, hello, Marsh, or whatever the name is. Let's go on and run. Let's make sure it's working. Okay, so I got my running here. Enter in your name. I'm going to type in Marsh into my console. And notice what it says. It says, hello, Marsh. So I was able to get information from the user using my keyboard reader. Let's do another one. Let's get the user's favorite number. Okay. So I'm going to do, let's do an int. So int num equals. 
reader because I need to say, hey, keyboard reader, can you do a job for me? And he's like, yeah, I can do a job. What do you want me to do? And I say, hey, I want you to read an int for me because that's the variable type. So this has to agree with the variable type that you're placing in there. I'm going to put, whoops, please enter in your favorite number. Okay. <coughs> System, um, let's take that number and let's multiply it by five. Okay, so in my system dot out dot print line, your favorite number times five is, then what I'm going to do is num times five. Okay, let's run that one again. So it says enter your name, Marsh. Hello, Marsh. Please enter in your favorite number. My favorite number is nine. Your favorite number times five is 45. So keyboard reader, things to keep in mind when we're doing these programs, okay? First thing we're gonna have to do is create that folder called terminal IO and keyboard reader and screenwriter. So that terminal IO folder that you guys have on your Chromebook now, you're gonna wanna make sure that stays forever in your files because we're gonna be using it constantly to be able to run, okay? So keep that in mind. We're gonna want that there. Second thing we always have to do is we need to import that keyboard reader so that's available to be accessed by the program. Third thing we're gonna need to do is create the keyboard reader. So we need to instantiate, create it so that it's able to be used. Then we need to be able to prompt the user and read in the information. So those are the four things that are consistently gonna need to be done on a program if you wanna get input in from the user. And that's the end of this example program. We'll do a couple of examples with together later as well. And you'll be doing a lot of practice with this as well. So don't worry about it. You guys will get a lot of practice as we continue throughout this unit. Till then, I'll see you later, Sabres.